Whoa. A reminder, because he's starting to get that turn in his shoulders, that's gonna bring everything this direction. You see no foot movement there, that's key. Whoa. And then a reward. Okay. <laughs>guys ethan here with standing stone kennels and we are on legends third whoa training session if you watched the last two you got to see how we taught him how to stop with the belly collar um we've been incorporating movement with him with the dummy because he loves to retrieve and then we started to incorporate the q whoa followed by stimulation on his belly to make sure that he's actually responding to the q which once he is doing that which is where he's at and kind of how we ended last session um we're ready to start that transition from using collar pressure around his belly to collar pressure on his neck. Now, to start, we're going to get him pumped up with a few fun bumpers and uh, we'll incorporate some stops as kind of a refresher of what we did last time. Ready? Okay. Good. You can see too, uh, he's moving drastically better. He's getting more and more comfortable wearing the belly collar as these sessions go on, which is important. Uh, uh, uh. No. We will actually revisit using the belly collar for steadiness work when he moves into that uh, stage in his life where he's working on steady to wing shot and fall training. So it's important that he's very comfortable wearing the belly collar. Good. All right. So we talked about two different things that we use. We use a whoop, whoop, W-H-O-P-O-O-P, -O -O -P, however you actually want to spell it, but whoop is the warning. We've got to give him a cue when he's actively running fast. We need to give him the ability to understand that woe is coming after that. Dogs anticipate everything. And if we go whoop, woe, he'll understand that the woe is coming after the fact. So he needs to be slowing up with that whoop. And because dogs anticipate, most of the time he's going to be stopping or trying to throw those brakes on pretty hard just with that whoop noise. So. That is the difference between the two when you hear me saying them. Um, we're gonna get him moving. He's watching birds a little bit, but okay. Get him moving. Come on. All right, let's go. Let's go, let's go. Come on. Whoop. Whoa. So that's all with no collar at all. He's got a few steps in there, but that shows he truly understands what the cue means. We'll still need an occasional correction or collar correction to uh, reinforce this because he's not 100% finished, but he understands what hook, what uh, the whoop and woe mean. Another fun bumper here, and then we're gonna actually start this transition to his neck. Uh, 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 here. You can see that he still likes to come back and play and mess around with the bumpers just a little bit. That's something that we're gonna have to fix down the road. At this point, it's not a huge issue. I just don't want him to continue jumping at or trying to bite those bumpers from my hand. That's gonna be the biggest one that you're gonna see. If we need to correct, that'll be happening. So, we're going to stop him. Come on. Hi, hi, hi. Come on. He says, I'm already stopped. Whoop. Whoa. Good. Now, we're going to start and just switch back to stimulation on his neck. We still have the belly collar on, and because I'm using uh, DT Systems 1820 collar, it's got a little toggle switch on here. Makes it really simple for me to go from the collar on his neck to the collar on his belly. As we make this transition, because he's already shown us that he understands what woe means and how to stop and stand there, whoa, we're going to reinforce woe and then a nick on his neck collar. This is how we make that transition. Now, if he struggles with this and tries to continue moving, we can toggle switch over and then go back to stopping him with his belly during the transition phase. It's important that he knows and has a good understanding of how to stop and stand there before you make this transition. Otherwise, you're going to end up with levels of confusion, which just mean you weren't ready for this step. So, okay, throw another bumper. This is to keep enthusiasm up in the session. Um, teaching woe isn't overly fun. Hey, 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 hey. You know, any of this formal work, it's no longer puppy games, but
but we do our best to keep it as fun as possible. Okay, okay, ready? Whoop, whoa, all on his neck here. Whoa, we're reinforcing with that. And now we're gonna do a little bit of walking around. If we see movement, any footstep, whoa. Tapping Nick on the collar when I say whoa. If he keeps moving, he's gonna feel multiple nicks. Tap, 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 until he stops moving. Whoa. We're gonna go up just another little level here. Right now I'm on a six for legend. Whoa, good. We'll move in. This is gonna be a hard one. This is usually hard for dogs to move all the way into them, get to them without them moving, give them a calm, gentle petting. This is also something that we see people make quite a few mistakes with. They wanna get excited. They're like, oh, good boy, woo! And then the dog moves, and then you have to correct them again. Whoa. Our goal is to help condition this steadiness and understand that he can get comfortable with us moving up on him. Whoa. Petting him, good. Whoa. And then moving away. A job well done deserves another bumper. Okay. Good job. Good job. Hi, hi, hi. Hi. Here. Good boy. No. Good job. Ready? Again, we're going to get him moving. Whoa. I'm using Nick on his neck. Whoa. Looks like we're going to get a little distraction here shortly. Whoa. Now, when we do this session, we see a lot of people try and move all the way behind their dog. What did he just do right there? He turned so that he can keep me in his focus. Moving behind him is the hardest. He wants to focus us, he wants to pay attention to us, and if you move all the way around him, eventually you can get to that step, but it's going to be more difficult in the beginning stages. So try and keep out where your dog can see you in that 180 degrees, basically, um, in front of the dog. Once he gets really good at this, we can make a loop all the way around him. Whoa. Whoa. Uh -huh. Distraction. He's paying attention to the vehicles pulling up. Whoa. But we're able to handle him through this. Whoa. He's not trying to come to me. He's not trying to continue to move, which means that this transition is going well. Whoa. Another fun bumper. Okay. Boy, good boy. Hi, hi, hi. Here. Good. No. One more. Now, he's doing well with this. We see um, dogs figure out, though, that when this belly collar is on, it means that they need to stand still. So, what we're going to end up doing is actually loosening this. This is, again, another baby step in this process. Now, I've got a belly collar that's not going to do anything. It's just flopping around here. I can put my whole arm underneath of it, but he still feels a little bit of that pressure. Just that gentle reminder that says, oh, I've still got a belly collar on. Now, if you're gonna see a mistake, this is typically where it's gonna happen. He's going to try, um, he's gonna try and come to us. And if we see that, then we'll need to just take a step back and tighten that belly collar up and do some more conditioning. Good, ready? Yeah. Whoa. Good. Whoa. We're gonna try and move in on him. Uh, uh, uh. Me swinging this dummy around is getting his focus pulled. So I'm gonna keep it out of the way for now. Whoa. Uh, uh, uh. He moves his feet like that. He didn't get the reward of a, a little petting. Whoa. Whoa. Every time I'm saying, whoa, the collar comes immediately after. He's gonna learn to avoid the collar eventually, avoid the collar completely by complying to the cue. Good. He's standing well enough now that we can move away from the actual wrapping of the cue. You've heard me utilize, whoa. 
You've heard me use the cue a little more often, even when he's actually exhibiting the behavior. And that's because we're trying to make sure he has an understanding of what whoa means and how to associate it to the behavior that he is exhibiting. Now that we've got a good understanding, whoa. I'm only going to use it in the form of a correction or pulling focus back to the task at hand. He's watching these birds fly around, getting a little bit distracted, and we're able to say, whoa, apply collar pressure and remind him that he needs to stand there. We try another rep here. Whoa. Good. Now, he's getting pretty good at this. I'm gonna try and make that loop all the way around him. My expectation is that he's still gonna try and turn to look, but if we can handle him through that, it'll be a good, uh, it'll be a good thing for him. Whoa. A reminder, because he's starting to get that turn in his shoulders, that's gonna bring everything this direction. You see no foot movement there, that's key. Whoa. And then a reward. Okay. Good job, buddy. He's still running vibrate on his neck on the way back. He knows what that means. It's easy to continue to condition that here. Good. One more. Uh, 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 uh. Now, he's doing really well. And the final step in this is going to be continuing to make this looser to the point where we can take the belly collar off all the way. I'm going to run this out now. The belly collar is going to feel like almost nothing there at all may even be to the point where it could fall off. Uh, we'll do a couple reps this way. If he's doing well, we're gonna take that belly collar off completely and see how he does. Good. Whoop. Whoa. Good. Whoa. Whoa. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh. whoa. Again, he's super excited about that bumper. Whoa. So after this one, we're gonna go ahead and remove the belly collar and then see how he does after that. If you're going to have problems, or if we have a hole in our development process thus far, we're gonna see it. It's gonna come out, he's gonna go, I don't have that belly collar anymore on, which means I don't have to stand still. Good. He's showing that he's doing a nice job, so we're gonna test this out. If he struggles with it, then we'll take that half step back and know that we need to do some more conditioning. Okay. Whoop. Whoa. Whoa. Ah, ah, ah. Whoa. I'm gonna end up dropping this right at the wrong time. That's usually how it works. Whoa. Ah, ah. You can see a little more movement. He's a little bit shiftier because he can feel that belly collar is not there. But at the same time, he's still handling. As long as he's still handling, we can continue to progress. Whoa. Uh, uh. do one more fun bumper ah. and then we're gonna call this a session guys okay good boy good boy nice job nice job guys that's gonna be his third and final step we're gonna do a little more repping just like you saw there but legend has gone from um, our positive pigeon drill to begin with understanding how to um, stop verbally, but not understanding how to stand longer than that. To, we use the belly collar, then we transition that to his neck, and now we no longer have the belly collar on, and we're only using the neck collar to reinforce him standing still. So he's gone through the three steps that we need, um, and that's, minus a little more conditioning, how we teach whoa. Thanks guys for watching. If this is your first time to the channel, please hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. 
and we'll keep you posted on Legends work as well as a lot of other great things. I'm the guy with the pink gun and we will catch you next time. Thank you.